Hello everyone, I'm Michael Galarnik. In this video, we'll go over how to use random forest in Python with scikit-learn. We'll train and tune both a regression and a classification model, and along the way, we'll explore key topics like bagging, hyperparameter tuning, feature importance, and visualizing decision trees. This video pairs with a detailed blog post that includes code, plots, and explanations. You'll find links to that and the GitHub repo in the description. Let's start with the concept of bagging, short for bootstrap aggregating. Bagging involves creating multiple data sets by sampling with replacement from the original training data. I have a blog on this if you want to learn more. Each of these bootstrap data sets is used to train a different decision tree. The key idea is that by averaging the predictions of these diverse trees, whether by majority vote for classification or averaging for regression, we reduce variance and improve generalization. As far as what makes random forests different, random forests take bagging a step further. Instead of using all features to split at every node, random forests randomly select a subset of features at each split. This further reduces correlation between trees and makes the ensemble more powerful. In scikit-learn, this is controlled by the max features parameter. For classifiers, the current default value is the square root of the number of features. For regressors, the current default value is all the features. Now, let's build a random forest regression model using scikit-learn. We'll use the housing data from King County in Washington and predict home prices based on features like square footage, number of bedrooms, latitude, and longitude. We'll first load our data. The next step is to arrange our data into a features matrix and a target vector. Our target is housing prices, and our features is everything else. We'll next perform a train test split We'll now train a baseline model. We'll use scikit-learn's random force regressor. As far as our parameters, we'll set n estimators equal to 100. What this means is that we'll have 100 trees come together to make a final prediction. We'll have max features equal to 1 third. We'll set out of bag score equal to true. And we'll set random state equal to zero. For random state equal to zero, I'm just doing this so that if you run the same code as me, you get the same result. The next step, is to fit on the training set. We now can check our baseline out of bag score. The reason why we use out of bag evaluation is it gives us an early measure of generalization without touching the test set. If you'd like to learn more about out of bag evaluation, please check out the blog. Next, we'll use grid search to tune hyperparameters. We'll test combinations of n estimators, i.e. how many trees we have, max depth, how deep the trees can grow, as well as minimum samples per leaf, and more. We'll use grid search CV, i.e. we're going to perform cross-validation. We'll also set n jobs equal to negative 1. This allows us to use all the cores on our computer. We'll then use the fit method on the training set. After training, we can print the best parameters and evaluate the model on the test set. What this shows is that scikit-learn has a very efficient implementation of random forests. Additionally, random forests typically perform very well without much tuning. One of the biggest strengths of random forests is interpretability, especially compared to large language models, which often operate as black boxes. This is something I covered in my recent paper and YouTube video on how LLMs perceive social and moral norms. Random forests, on the other hand, let us see what features drive predictions. Scikit-learn provides two ways to do this. Mean decrease in impurity, or MDI for short. This is fast and built in, but can overemphasize features with many unique values. There's also permutation importance. This is much more robust as it measures a drop in performance when a feature's values are randomly shuffled. This allows you to understand which features drive predictions. For example, location is usually very informative in real estate as you can see here. The image further emphasizes this. It's important to emphasize that even though random forest is an ensemble model, you can inspect individual decision trees that comprise the ensemble. You can also create a grid to display several trees side by side for comparison.
To recap, random forests are robust, interpretable, and easy to train. They work well for both classification and regression. Finally, you can inspect feature importance as well as visualize individual decision trees. This is in contrast to LLMs, which aren't that interpretable. For the full tutorial, annotated code, and extra examples, check out the blog. The GitHub repo is also linked in the description. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe.